Hey, so this is the fifth video. This one will um, talk about how to do num uh, div number two, the deliverable number two. Um, if you go into the description of this video, you can uh, many, many links, but the first link should be a download to um, images taken on July 7th, 2011, that class. Um, should take you to uh, this page right here, and you can go to the right side here and click download and it should come up with it might take a second it should come up with save file and you can save it and then once you download it you can say extract files and say ok and then you should get this folder right here and you can have all the images um, you can open them up and zoom in and read the uh, text and everything that it says um, and if you go to the description again you can go to um, div number two uh, requirements link, uh, which would give you this page right here, this main page pretty much. And if you scroll down, you go to project number one, div number two, then look at components, div number two. And you can see all the requirements uh, for this deliverable number two that is due uh, Thursday, I guess. Um, and you know, first one says brief overview, describing project number one. That's the uh, first component. So, um, if you click on the next link in the description, it should give you the startup enterprise link, which would be this page right here. And it is just a startup scenario uh, for a simple enterprise um, that you're going to have to invent for the class. Um, you're going to have to make your own, but you can look at this and see it as a sample, um, you know, like the story that uh, you know, you, you know, investor gives you fifteen thousand to be used to start up capital. Um, you, know, you can make up your own date, and you, can, uh, you could do. You know, instead of him buying a truck, you could have it be that, uh, or instead of you buying a truck for asset, you could have it so you're buying something else. And you could be in a business instead of uh, cables. You could be in a business of uh, anything you want. Um, and then some things, though, for some of the numbers. Uh, if you go back to the components uh, right here, if you look at this component right here, um, it shows seventeen thousand paid in capital by your uh, owner and investor. Um, it should show 34,000 credit in 3,000 uh, ledger account, which is paid in capital, I guess. Um, you know, those things need to be right. So just make sure you get okay with the components uh, requirements for those numbers. Um, you should have rental for your office and all those different things. But um, everything else you can make up yourself for the story. Um, Then uh, the next link should be links to Rational Rows and Visio. Um, if you don't have them already, you should already have them. They were uh, required in previous classes. Um, first link, Rational Rows. If you need to download it, scroll down. Rational Rows Enterprise Edition 2007 or 2003. Um, click Download. And obtaining a license will help you obtain the license for it. Um, and then if you go to the Visio link, it should take you to this page and you log in here. And this should be the MSDNAA page and you can get it through the, uh, through there, uh, Visio that is. And then the use case diagram and detailed use cases for each actor. Uh, that's another component requirement that you'll need to do. Um, if we look at the image for the use case diagram, um, let's see here, this should be, I think, um, we can go to the next one, this one's a little cleaner looking. Um, you can see it has a manager owner as one of the actors, it has a salesperson as one of the actors, and that's pretty much what you're going to want to have as uh, for your, um, you know, your, your, your use case. Um, but some of these things you might want to kind of make your own. Um, 
you know, you just kind of say something different or make it up yourself. And as long as you know that, uh, you know, salesperson arrow pointing to manager means that the manager can do anything the salesperson can do. Um, the salesperson, salesperson can only do things that the salesperson can do. Uh, but the manager owner can do, you know, all of this stuff. Um, such as the, uh, you know, salesperson can record sales order, but the uh, salesperson cannot do account maintenance or account re uh, report reporting. Um, but the manager owner can do that as well as the record sales order and the checking prices and things like that. Um, an important thing, uh, if you look here, it says include and extend. The difference to, between that is, uh, let's say the salesperson does this record sales order. When it says include, uh, that means that it must be done. Um, you know, that has to be done with uh, the recording of a sales order. So include would be uh, calculate sale, uh, would be calculate sale would be uh, required to do a, rec a record sales order. Uh, when it says extend though, for the update rec uh, record uh, customer or record customer, um, that would be that it's optional, it's a choice. You know, it doesn't have to be done, but it, it is an option that the salesperson can do um, when they were to do a uh, sales order, recording a sales order. Uh, and so, you know, just include is required, extend is optional, choice. Um, and then just make sure the errors are correct, you know, extend points back out um, towards the record sales order, include will point to the uh, you know, calculate calculate sale. And let's see, um, there's other images of the use case. If you want more, there's the ledger engine. Um, he didn't really like it how it was done like this. He kind of wanted it back inside of this um, you know, area in here. Um, I think that's what he said during class. Let's see. Um, yeah, the class diagram. Let me show you the, the image for that. Let's see here. Uh, so this is the class diagram right here. Um, yours shouldn't look exactly like this, but it might look similar. Um, kind of like the use case diagram. And you'll have the form accounts, and you'll have the form table maintenance. And these things down here, you know, create order, update order, delete order, all, all methods and things that you know, can be done in the uh, form new order, I guess. And then there's our, those are, uh, I guess, variables, I suppose, um, for that form, I, I guess. And you have different classes for the class diagram. You have a boundary class, a control class, and like the normal class, I think, which, um, you, know, you can Google that and find more about it, but basically the boundary class should keep you from moving forward, such as a login screen. And uh, I think the control class is supposed to be um, maybe a ledger, something with ledger engine, I think. I'm not really sure. So just Google that and uh, you know, look that up and see what it, what makes sense. You know, what which, uh, what each class does, boundary class, control class, etc. Um, then you have a database entity relationship diagram, the database ERD that you need to make that shows the foreign key relationships among the tables. Let me show you an image for that. Um, this should be it right here. Um, so it should look pretty similar to this, you know. You should get the uh, the crow's feet right and all that. Um, some of the values may, the names may be a little different, the uh, names to these variables and things. And the table names should be a little different, pro well, possibly, you know. Instead of accounts, it might say BE. Um, you won't have accounting date, you don't use that. Uh, ledger accounts, you could name it ledger accounts, you could name it ledger, whatever your table name is going to be. Um, Goods and services probably should have it say GS, I think, and uh, order details. That could just say details. Um, but again, whatever your table name will be for that is what you should name it. Um, 
and you'll have the foreign keys and primary keys and it should look pretty similar to this uh, but just make sure it's to what yours uh, looks like in your database I guess and again um, right now you only have one table you only have the accounts BE table business entities table I think so um, with login ID and login password and record source all that stuff um, so we're gonna have to I'll show you an Excel document that shows you, uh, you know, I guess these four new tables I suppose um, and later on we'll do that in the uh, Visual Studio we'll make that let's see uh, the next thing is a data dictionary so you can click on the link in the description for a data dictionary um, what he talks about when he does that, he uh, should give you this link right here, this page, and you can come down, and you can see it shows ledger accounts. Ledger should be one of the uh, tables you'll need. Business entities tells you ID, user login ID, and user's password, all that stuff that we made. You'll make you'll need to make new tables, which I'll help you with. Like goods and services, all this, except for the green stuff, I think. Um, orders is another one. Uh, counting date we do not need. Um, details, which is uh, you know, order detail, I guess. And you know we don't need the green again. You know, we just need that. And we're gonna come up come up with. Uh, I have names for you that are uh, used in the code that we get the sample code. So you won't use these names. You'll use names that I'll give you, which are um, you know you're you're supposed to use it. It's in the sample code. You're supposed to use those names that I'm going to give you. Um, I can show you the uh, chart of accounts. Let's see here. So in the ledger part, uh, you can click on chart of accounts and it will give you uh, this page right here. And we're going to put this into the ledger table when we get that, when we get down to it. Um, that'll just make it easier. So you can see, you know, 1000 is cash and all that. Um, Yep. Uh, let's see. Uh, another thing. Let's see. Um, an image of the data dictionary. Let's see an image of that data dictionary. This should be. This isn't really the data dictionary image, I don't think. This says data definitions and descriptions. This may just be part of the data dictionary. Um, it should also show, though. Uh, kind of a uh, you know I think it might sh need to, well that might be nice but sh you should also do the uh, table populated with sample data I think that would be good um, that would be the next uh, requirement I guess so um, if you go to the images on whiteboard image uh, let's see yeah so so here's all that sample data, which I will show you, you know, this is what he showed us in class. And um, you know, we already wrote it all up, so you don't have to look too much into that. You can just look at the link in the description to a Google document, which is this right here, which will be a nice list of you know, it shows you the BE table, the detail table, GS, ledger, order. Um, shows you everything he wrote up in class, the sample data that he showed us. Um, and you're going to need to not have this exact sample data. You're going to have to come up with your own data. But I will show you... Um, hmm. Yeah, I mean, I'll show you in a second uh, kind of how to come up with it, I guess, a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and stop this video and make a new one, and I'll continue with the next video.